What is going on folks? So back for part 17 of the Must Learn KQL video series. Uh, if you go over to aka.ms slash must learn KQL, we are right here, part number 17, the let statement. So let's get into a couple of examples. Basically, uh, what the let statement does is create variables in your KQL queries. So we can do things like uh, create a variable for time offset, create a, a variable for a specific VIN ID, and we run it and it brings back some data. So much is a little bit easier for sharing KQL code uh, as opposed to having to set the time range in the little drop down box here. You can also do advanced things like create variables from data. So let me make this a little bigger here. So in this example, we're creating a login variable that is comprised of the security event and where we're capturing these specific or this specific 4624 event ID and uh, projecting the account target login ID and the login time. We're also creating a logout variable, capturing the logout event ID 4634 and creating the same kind of values. And then down here, we're going to join those two data sets and present the account used, the login time, and the logout time. So if we run this, you'll get back something similar to this example. So for this account, last logged in, last logged out time. Additionally, you, you can do other things like um, access watch list data with these variables. And actually, I see I don't have one of those here, but I'll give you the, the code. I can't run it in this tenant because I don't actually have that watch list created and I don't have Chris to do that. So, but this is basically creating a watch list variable that is pulling data from this specific watch list and basically comparing it to the computer IP. So we're comparing this DST IP to the computer ID and seeing what comes back. So watch list, just think of it as a variable in your KQL code. And that's about it for watches. Thanks for watching and I'll see you the next time.